Okay. Um, hello, uh, welcome to the afternoon session. And in this session, I'm going to be talking about uh, uh, the Google Cloud Document AI and Document AI work page. Uh, my name is Harry Puri, and in this talk, I'm um, going to provide an illustration of how Google has made document models consumable to business users. Uh, I'll be covering a product overview of Doc.ai Workbench in the context of our Doc.ai product, and then we'll leave some time in the end of uh, q &A. So um, basically, uh, in a nutshell, the, uh, this uh, product solves the problem of uh, um, in a, extracting text from documents and in a manner that is suitable for um, um, other uh, follow-on applications. So um, the, the reason that we are, there are a number of reasons we are uh, actually doing this, uh, and, and digital documents uh, create digital manual labor. For example, uh, this is labor that many of us do, but it never shows up in a job description. So, so it's essential to the um, uh, large majority of today's business workflows. Basically, it captures the value of the data in those digital documents. So uh, we spend a lot of time you know, validating the document, checking it, verifying it, sorting it, keying it in, and pasting it from here to there, uh, different systems, cross-checking it, and normalizing it. So this kind of labor is, uh, and uh, as an example, the ratio of healthcare admins to physicians is 35 times. Uh, so basically, yeah, in uh, every physician that you have, you have about 35 other people keying in data for that physician. So that's, uh, and it's increasing. So that's uh, the problem domain that this document AI product tries to solve. Um, in this um, uh, uh, slide, what we are uh, trying to say is that uh, the document understanding can be improved with uh, artificial intelligence machine learning. Um, on the left, you see the stack where a uh, manual process is used to type in the document. Um, uh, into the structured data in the system. And then we have some semi-automated uh, uh, processes that use OCR technology and templates that can take your document and um, uh, put it into a structured data format. And these are usually custom built and uh, they are specifically applicable to a specific type of document that's usually recognized and that gets extracted from it. And on the far right of it, um, you see the artificial intelligence and machine learning based document processing, which and, uh, kind of uh, it goes through a learning process and gets the structured data out of the uh, documents in a way that's portable and uh, extendable. So, um, uh, and the, so we are going to focus this presentation on the right and most uh, part of it, uh, uh, where we are trying to use uh, the advances, current advances in machine learning in a way that it's consumable to most of the users to extract uh, uh, text from uh, the document in a fashion that is usable readily by systems. So um, if you look at uh, what document AI does, it turns unstructured content into business ready structured data. So it's actually trying to understand and organize the data. Uh, in the example that's shown, it's a, a driver's license and the end product is a JSON envelope uh, that contains all the information that has been extracted from the document. So. Um, uh, we, uh, basically, uh, we've been working with our leading customers and we realized that the problem, the legacy uh, technologies such as OCR are solving the problem that's too simple. You can get some structured data in the table parcel, but what you really need is business ready structured data, looking for technologies that will read documents uh, similar to humans. So if there's a uh, a loss of resolution or uh, some uh, thing is out of place or something, you can actually make the machine learning model learn that and uh, give a very predictable uh, output from any document that's given to it. So uh, in the document AI uh, product uh, is a pretty large product. <coughs> so I'm going to kind of focus myself uh, onto the red bounded box here. Uh, basically ingest and filter up frame and uh, extract entities and also human review. So these factors uh, are what we'll be looking at. So uh, basically um, in the uh, um, in the first uh, chart that I showed, uh, there are um, matching document AI components. 
So there is a, on the left, you see a general, general document AI. That model is available. It just gets the uh, text off of the document. It's similar to OCR, but uh, assisted with machine learning. So it can identify the text better. In the middle, you see the specialized document AI that uh, these are models that have been built with the, uh, you know, three dimensional formats. So for example, things like tax, uh, scanning a tax documents or um, uh, invoice documents, expense statements, um, and driver license, passports, et cetera. Uh, and it can also handle slight variations. So you can upgrade your model, specialized model, um, and to actually get all the data that you're interested in. And the advantage is that these models are already pre-built and you can up-train them to do any additional items that you need. Uh, Up-training means that, okay, let's say you have an expense uh, sheet and uh, it's the model uh, was trained on a certain format. And let's say you have a, a string on that, uh, uh, on that format that you added, that your company added uh, later on. So now you can go and change that uh, model uh, that was delivered by Google and add that extra statement that you need and start getting that data as well into your JSON output. And then on the right most, you see the document AI workbench. It's a very new uh, product that was just released uh, a few days ago at our uh, Google Next 22 conference. So in this uh, document AI workbench, you bring your content and your models, and then you can customize those and create those models on the fly um, in a codeless fashion on the Google consoles. So we're going to start uh, looking at uh, examples of each one of these. Uh, number one, the general, number two, the specialized, and number three, the document AI. So looking at number one, the document OCR, this is actually looking at um, uh, uh, patent application or actually a granted patent. And um, it, it parses all the information from that. So you know, basically, if you're only interested in the text in that uh, document, this is the model that you want to use and uh, it will extract all the text for you. And uh, it kind of, uh, um, uh, the, um, the confidence index would give you a, a hint whether the resolution of the book document is too bad, then you can actually improve that. So, this is number one. Uh, number two is the industry specific pre built models. These are expenses, invoices, uh, driver's license, uh, passports, uh, various countries, um, and um, uh, other documents such as income tax documents, pay slips, and bank statements, uh, mortgage applications, et cetera. These are sort of the semi structured uh, documents that already exist. So these are the models that exist for those documents. You can download those. Uh, full de uh, a full list is available in the URL that's uh, at the bottom of the slide. You bring those down and of course you can upgrade them with uh, any specialized content that you might have or use them as is. So the most complex one and the uh, latest one is the document AI work instead it was just released uh, announced at the Google Next 22 conference. And this is uh, Google's next generation document modeling stack. So this allows you to uh, do all the items that are shown in the flow chart on the top that import the documents, label them, train the model, deploy the model, evaluate it, um, and then put it into production. So uh, it allows you the capability to develop, uh, uh, to extract, and uh, also split the document into training and, um, and uh, 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 testing. Uh, uh, sets, et cetera, et cetera. Everything is done on the console. So um, one important concept that we, uh, I'd like to talk about is uh, document AI processors. Uh, this is a name that we have given to uh, the interface between the document file and the machine learning model. So uh, whenever you want to actually parse a document, you use this uh, processor and give it the file, and then it calls the machine learning model on your behalf. And these processes are used to um, classify the document, split it, parse it, or analyze the document. So you can use those processors to do that. So once, uh, basically, the unit of uh, execution on any uh, document image is a processor. Another concept that I'd like to uh, put to you is the human in the loop. I mean, this is not a new concept. Almost all machine learning groups have this um, as a safety valve in the case uh, that something untoward happens 
for example, when you're driving a car or a Tesla or something and it, it doesn't recognize an object on the road, uh, it uh, suspends uh, uh, steering and warns you so that you can take over. So that's the human in the loop. In this specific case, um, a document is uh, yeah. sent to the loop. I actually have a flow chart to uh, uh, show this. So let's say the document comes in into the processor and uh, uh, then it checks the confidence level. If the confidence level is, uh, for example, 80% or more, no action is required, it gets the data from that document and it puts it away. Um, if the confidence level is lower, then it kind of puts it into the human in the loop output and then it follows along the, uh, that, uh, um, uh, that workflow. Human in the loop eyeballs the um, document, corrects it, and then uh, puts the uh, creates the output uh, of that document and then submits the document for up training for future uh, generations of that same model so that um, uh, in the future, if a similar document is encountered, it will be passed correctly. So um, uh, human in the loop is kind of an important thing to keep honing your model, getting it to be um, uh, getting to better F1 scores. Um, so uh, next, uh, let's look at the actual flow in uh, Google Console on how this is implemented. So uh, what we're looking at on the right side of the screen is the Google Cloud Console. Um, you log in and then you go to the document AI uh, option, which is uh, pointed to by the arrow. Uh, once you bring that up, you get this uh, screen that uh, allows you to create a custom processor. Oh, by the way, I'm going through the process only for that last one, the document AI uh, workbench. Uh, the others are in the resource list at the end of this presentation that you can actually go and look. They're more simple, so uh, I did not address them here. So as soon as you click uh, 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 create a processor, um, and there's a concept of uh, enabling APIs in Google Cloud Console that will happen at this point. So essentially, uh, it'll, uh, it'll pop up to the question mark, do you want to enable the .ai API? And then when you say yes, it'll, create, it'll bring you back to the screen so that you can create the kind of custom processor. Uh, the next screen that you get is this one. And um, I think, yeah, this is updated from the latest uh, uh, after announcement. So on the, the screen on the left, um, uh, um, uh, gives you an option of three different processors um, on the um, custom processor uh, list. And I'm going to use the custom document extractor uh, for a specific project that let's say I'm going to make to scan, uh, let's say cards, insurance cards, health insurance cards, or, or maybe uh, pharmacy cards or something. So I'm going to uh, click on the uh, create processor in which uh, case I get this little uh, uh, window on the right, I took a small snap snapshot of it. It gives you the process of details. Um, and the and notice these tabs that we'll, we'll use as we uh, progress in the workflow. And then it also gives you the uh, the data set option uh, to set a data set location. This data set location is a storage location on GCP where the past document are kept along with the supporting data structures for the model. So uh, uh, typically we set it to a bucket or to a folder path and uh, don't put any other files in that path. So this is for the uh, custom document workbench uh, processor to work on on its own. So um, after we've done that, then uh, we get the, to the next uh, screen here, as we see it's the train screen and you see the import documents uh, button. So you click that, in order to import the documents uh, that are uh, that will show up in this section here, and on the right also notice some of the um, uh, buttons. There is a, um, a train button. So when you click that, it will actually uh, start training a new model. Or there are some um, minimum quality uh, uh, specifications that must be met before that model can be trained. Uh, it has a certain number of documents. If those are not met, it will pop up a window and tell you that that's not. Uh, uh, possible right now. Uh, there are other items also available. Um, uh, uh, let's say you have two thousand documents to label, and you uh, don't, you can't do it all by yourself. So in that case, uh, this labeling tasks is the workflow that you would uh, use. Add the other people to the um, other people's ID to that labeling task, and um, provide them uh, the documents, and then people in the 
uh, labeling tasks would get their doc AI uh, permissions to be able to label the segment of document that is assigned to them. Um, and then uh, this is a label stats is basically tells you whether the labels are ready for uh, the training or not. Uh, and you'll get that anyway when you click the training button. Export data set is um, typically uh, uh, when you've finished training the model, this is being trained in, let's say, a dev project, and then you want to move it over to a production project. So then at that point, you export the data set and you import it into the production uh, and project and you run it there. And typically that's done for um, uh, compliance reasons. For example, let's say you're the real, let's say this is all fake data and then the real data is going to have PHI, PII or PCI information. In that case, that would be the work for you to take. If you don't have those constraints, then you can uh, process them right here. So um, this was the uh, input. We were talking about importing the document. Let's go on to the next screen and see what happens uh, when you click that button. The import document dialog box pops up. You uh, I've superimpose some screens here. Um, you get the um, uh, uh, the bucket source path prompt. So here you would give it a prompt of where you've uploaded the images that you know, of the documents that you need to parse. And then um, and there is a data split option. If you want, you can um, assign some documents to training, some to test, or you can ask the um, uh, Google uh, processor to do the auto splitting. That means it'll take 80% of the documents for training, 20% for test, or it can do uh, set them an unassigned, and then later on you can go into the console and assign those documents to the particular uh, uh, split that you want. And then you click import. <clears throat> uh, at import, then um, you get the documents um, that I showed in the first screen, and then you click on the documents that you want to label uh, after assigning to the labels split. In this case, um, we select a document to label, and then um, in, in this example, what I'm trying to do is read one value off of it. There's a number on these uh, documents called the Rx bin. And um, I, so in order to read that off, I created a label called RxBin. And then I use this tool up here to mark the region of interest. And I, I, I marked it here, but here it is the RxBin number uh, and uh, assign the label to it, RxBin. So I'm training the model that, hey, the, the RxBin number is here. So I do this uh, for several documents, as you can see in the training on uh, guidelines on the right for this specific model. It says it needs at least uh, 50 uh, documents, but it can work with 10. So uh, the only thing is that if you work with 10, you'll get a lower accuracy rate. Uh, if you have all 50, then you'll get a better accuracy rate. So uh, going on to the next. Uh, so after you label them all, um, then you can train the and create a processor. So you can uh, select the train button that I highlighted earlier, and then it'll go away for some time. Um, uh, you, it, you click the button, you get this window, you give it a name, uh, and then it'll go away out for some time, and then it'll, it'll start uh, uh, cre creating the model. So train a new version. This was the part of the screen. You hit that, you go label, uh, add the name, and then you have to say start training. After it's done, you get this window at the bottom. Uh, it has some numbers next to it when it was created. Um, and then there's uh, um, the model name, et cetera, et cetera. And then the F1 scores on it, et cetera. All those things are available, and then you can deploy it. After deployment, uh, um, this, um, the sample request, if you click on that, you get the URL for the API to actually use this model. But uh, let me talk about that in more detail a little later on. Um, you can also use the console itself to upload a test document and see if the RxBin number can be taken out of it. So uh, in this case, I said upload document. It gave me a prompt to upload the file. I uploaded that, and it read the uh, RxBin number off of it. So that's um, how I can verify that the new model works. And then uh, when I click on the sample request, you'll see on the right that there is a REST method and a Python method to do the same thing. Uh, the Python method is easier because you don't have to base64 your image. But in um, the REST method, you can uh, create a base64 in, uh, of the image and then send it into the JSON packet. The payload packet structure is shown here. 
and, and the KF12 command is shown here, call the uh, API in order to get the model to work. So uh, the model is working now, there's an API available, and uh, what are the different ways you can use that? So there are two um, ways to use it. One is online, uh, synchronous method, and the other is a batch method. So the online method is that we call uh, uh, the API with one document, uh, what we did in the curl command. You can analyze a single small document and get the results quickly. And so typically you would uh, do this for web applications, uh, either from the mobile phone or on the browser-based web applications. And this call the API with the document and they give you back the JSON payload that you need. Um, I'll talk more about the payload in a uh, next slide, I think. Um, the other method is to use a batch um, uh, or asynchronous method. Here you would take a large number of documents in a batch and give it to the um, uh, API. And then the API will scan all those documents and put the results in storage. And you would do this uh, for an offline approach to scanning the documents. So uh, 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 talking about the API itself, so the API itself has a unified endpoint, uh, documentai.googleapis.com. Uh, it does almost all the things, uh, including the batch and the, uh, the synchronous um, method. So all these services point to that. And um, uh, it's um, uh, got the same um, uh, security compliance and client libraries and everything uh, that uh, apply to all of them. So um, it's just like any other Google endpoint. Uh, like for example, if you run the query, Google API.com is similar to that. Uh, it needs the same OAuth 2 tokens, et cetera, in order to do it. Um, the results that would come back from calling one of those APIs is uh, a universal document structure, and that structure is uh, defined. And there's um, uh, the JSON output basically shows you where the information, the payload would be residing. Um, this can be called with multiple different languages. Uh, uh, Java, Node.js, Python, uh, it can be called in the REST or the GRPC style. So the links on this uh, uh, slide on the left show you where you can get your client libraries from for any one of these languages and include it with your uh, product um, so that you can call it directly. Uh, they, uh, we have a series of uh, tutorials called Quick Starts. Um, you can use this quick start to process a document using the client library, and it is very prescriptive. It walks you through step by step up to the very end, and also tells you how to tear it down after you're done. So you can go through one of these quick starts, and it will actually uh, let you know uh, very, very precisely what exactly you need to do. Now, it's, I'll show you a sample of the code. Uh, so on the left, you see the Python or the curl commands. Uh, in this case, I'm showing you the Python command. See, it's much easier than trying to convert the document to base right, and then use it. Uh, you just give the file path and then the library does the rest. Um, just easier to do it that way. I, I like to use less code. So, I mean, you know, this is easier, but I've done the other way also. Um, then on the cloud, uh, the right side shows the rest command. So basically it's a curl command and then you have to base 64 the image document and put it in this content area. And then send it out. And also, you have to get the bearer tokens, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you just uh, use the copy icons here and copy this command, and then you're in business. So uh, also, you can um, instead of using curl command, you can just use Postman. This is an example with Postman. Uh, you have to use the same JSON uh, payload. Uh, this part here is base sixty four encoded document, and then the result comes back to you. They are explained in the document uh, JSON format and. Um, uh, this is how you would use the postman form. So that's it in today's uh, um, Doc AI workbench um, uh, session. And um, there are resource links in the slide deck. Um, there are some formal uh, document AI workbench uh, document links. And then there are uh, these code labs, which are also uh, tutorials, uh, they are free. So just go click on them and uh, you can try to run the uh, three types, different types, the custom document extractor code lab, uh, the specialized uh, processor code lab, or just the OCR code lab. Uh, this is the most complex and it gets uh, very easy. The OCR is almost, yeah, it's a lot of software documents, so almost a non-event. So that's it. Uh, I'll open up for question and answers. Thank you.
Okay. And Jordan, so I, I don't know, I should. So, so this covers uh, OCR and also pure patch. Or is it just OCR? No, there is OCR, there is OCR there, but it's enhanced by AI and other. Okay. The, so this is document AI is only uh, for image instructing documents from image, or there's NLP inside. Uh, there is NLP inside. Okay. And there is AI, uh, AI ML modeling model inside to be able to infer the uh, text even if your resolution is very low. Mm. How expensive it is. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know. No. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, we can we can go. <laughs> yeah, so the uh, calculator is online, so you can. I know and the price is online, so yeah. I don't need to ask. It. Yeah, it's it's not uh, very pricey. So, uh, in fact, um, um, digital is using it for parsing PDF files, so uh, you can uh, talk to them and they will. They will I was just, going to ask you that other case, like all the like a personal. Yeah, handwritten yeah. notes, they can be done. To what point can you do, can document do like extract the text, map to a structured data, and then? And then from then on, the uh, HDE uh, health data engine will take over and uh, do the further enhancements to it based on the medical terminology that's in the text. Okay. Um, to compare with AWS, it's like, I think it's called, Comprehend. Comprehend. Medical. Medical. Okay. Uh, no, it's totally different. Okay. Is it? Yeah. Uh, this is, I mean, I think, still, and I don't work for this, I don't work for Google, but this is because of the OCR and the training workbench to derive the text from the document, it's suitable for a whole library of use cases. That medical comprehend from AWS is very specific to medical. Oh, no, I'm not medical or without medical, they are two different points. But mm -hmm. in terms of medical, because that is probably all most on the source of healthcare companies. Yes. Right. So the medical one key part compliance, all that. Uh, yeah, so it, you can also apply it to uh, CCDAs, right? I mean, uh, uh, the, um, what's it called? The, uh, the clinical document architecture. So if you get your longitudinal location report from the CCDA and then you have the text, you can apply the terminology scanning in the NLP to that as well. You can also apply it to this JSON structure. So you extracted the text. Now the next step, so building blocks are one, get the text. Either you get it from Epic or you get it from one of the HIEs or wherever you get it from, you got it. Now, once you have it, then use the next building block, the healthcare data engine, in order to analyze that and put it in the Firestore or like a DICOM repository or which is what you want to put in. So, and does that answer the question? The functions are separate. Mm -hmm. The building blocks are different. So it's like vertex AI under document AI, there are multiple subservices. So vertex AI is supposed to run, uh, create, help you create and run models. And also it provides you the notebooks in order to be able to do that. And also do any analytics work on the query and um, uh, other data that you have. And so document AI is a separate thing. And is it going to work with vertex AI? Or it's not? Uh, I can check and let you know. I don't know. And <laughs> because uh, what I say is usually used to write the code. Right? Exactly. It's much more flexible, but doc AI is built for it's for for the for the doc. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and, and doc AI has more components. This workbench is just one component in the life cycle uh, for the ingest and for storing documents. So it also has a workbench. Um, uh, what is it called? A warehouse. Doc AI warehouse. So that stores the documents that you just scan and you can text search them. Mm -hmm. Right? So, so once you've ingested the document, it actually keeps the image and plus you can um, search it like as if it was a text archive. So there's more components there. Okay. <laughs> I haven't talked about those. <laughs> this, they just enhanced this for next, right? Yeah, for next, the workbench is working for next. So the, yeah, the component that I just showed you, document. Uh, yeah, AI workbench is actually, yeah, the first one, uh, this uh, first 
um, linked to big it uh, starts existing after these two. Right? Send me a nice last one. Yeah, yeah. There's three we talked about. It's this that we can support. And yeah, they turn over. Forgot the guys. It's not production. All right. Uh, should I stop, Shane? Uh, should we end with the who are you talking about? You're next. You have two, two minutes. You're in there. Yeah, you're in here. I'm in the other okay. Okay. We have a break. Yeah. Uh, three to three ten. Yes. Nice. Woohoo. We're back on schedule. <laughs> I think you should go. I'm working on a. Uh, uh, it's over. Once at the end of it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the long story. It's really good. Well, I'm working on a prototype with that sedated. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. By the way, I think just hit somewhere on the screen. Uh, escape. It, it's on full screen mode. I think. I don't know where. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm.